Super excited to have Julian Merriweather here. Uh, I would call you an unsung hero of last season, but I think most Cubs fans know just how important you were to that team. You know, it was a, it was a great season for you. Julian, I, I guess the first five games weren't the same as the rest of the season, right? Like, you can just separate that. Like, what what happened after five games that that flipped your season around? I mean, that, that was definitely, a, like, a big reflection period for me. Like, hey, things aren't going my way. Maybe make some small tweaks. I, I still thought I had a good foundation of what I wanted to do going in, into the year. And just kind of getting back to, hey, what's really going to turn this thing around? And we, we highlighted a few things just with the pitching staff and was able to make a quick adjustment and kind of just the confidence and experience kind of grew from there. How much of that is just a, a product of you're with a new team, new organization, playing in a new city where it's just a natural adjustment? Uh, there's probably no denying it because it is like you're everyone's a human and you you get out there regularly for the first time and it can really like take the breath out of you, um, but in a good way. And like kind of learn to embrace that throughout the year was really cool. Just having the, the fans energy every every home game. Describe your first time at Wrigley. Because I think every, nobody forgets their first time, whether it's as a fan or a player or a reporter. The first time you walk into that building, there's no question it's different than any other ballpark. Oh, man. I mean, yeah, seeing the ballpark itself is just like it takes you back in time. Like it, it, you feel like you're frozen in, in, a, in a time frame way before you were here. And it's very like I get a similar feeling from Fenway, like these old ballparks, they, they have that like historic feel to it, like where you get that moment of kind of awe being in it. And, you know, being the bullpen guys, we walk out to the – open every game and we see the the crowds going crazy for us in the first so it's just like a different experience for sure walking into that every game it's not quite the coliseum in italy <laughs> but but it, it is somewhat like that right yeah. like it's like you see it on tv you've seen it before and you're like oh this place is real yeah man it's surreal uh so you had a new uh adventure last year coming to the cubs you come to the national league as jared was talking about but now this year you have a new manager and and he's had great success. One of the things Craig Council has been very, very good at is managing his bullpen in the past. How excited are you about, you know, the new adventure with, with a new manager now? Oh, I mean, just talking to Craig and to know him as like a human is, is awesome because he's just such a cool down-to-earth guy. And then, yeah, we've kind of already, like, he's not afraid to jump right into the deep end with stuff and ask us, hey, how, how do you feel about, you know, everything with, with how the bullpen is? And, like, he, he wants to get to know you. And, um, I mean former players that he's had like they say nothing but good things and especially from the bullpen like that's that's a great great thing to hear when he knows how to manage it and everyone's you know on board and it would seem like he's come into this job knowing at least a little bit about you guys because of competing against you mm -hmm. um has he talked at all about like what he you know what he's learned about you from you know looking at it from the other other dugout no, like our first conversation, like he called me on the phone and he was like, yeah, man, the scout reports on you were tough this year. And like, he's giving me all the stuff that, you know, he was <laughs> dealing with, like dealing with our whole bullpen and, you know, everyone. And, uh, you know, it seems like he's super open and transparent and like, I'm, I'm excited just to learn a lot from him because he's been able to do all kinds of, uh, small little tweaks and, and things in, into the game that I think people might not see. And it's like, I'm just excited to learn from, from him and his experience. Bullpen was counted on so much last year. And I, I kind of feel like that's, it's not a secret. That's the way baseball has kind of gone. Like starters just don't go as long as they used to. And bullpens have become a critical part of, of the game of baseball. How do you look at what you guys are building right now and how you might be able to impact the 2024 team? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of nice having some of the, a lot of the familiar faces back in the group. I mean, a lot of the I mean, for me included, I was, it was kind of my first time going through a full season in the bullpen. And then guys like Adbert and Leiter, like us getting through that whole whole season together and and all the other guys that had chances and experience throughout the year like just bringing that into this year is already like a huge i think stepping stone for a lot of us because all right we've already seen what we can do and we've already kind of established it now it's like all right we have we have like roles that we know we can we can come through for the team and like we all just kind of pull together as, as a bullpen that's really great when you look at you mentioned mark Leiter, um, and the two of you led the team in appearances last year you had the the highest number of innings of any pure reliever um number one what what has helped you with that kind of durability to be able to go out and pitch that much and then number two how do you prepare yourself to try to go out and do something like that again this year yeah no i mean my career has been riddled with injuries and ups and downs and it's just about finding the small tweaks that kind of uh can get you to that place of for me it was health you know it was, it was always number one and uh it took a good good amount of trial and error but you know those things kind of add up over time and you kind of find the routines that are that are right for you and 
you know, I'm a big guy in the off season. I like to you know, stay in the gym and, and stay on my throwing program. So um, ha- having like a consistent, stable routine for that is, is huge for me. So coming off that season where you pitch more than you've ever pitched before, you don't take extra time to kind of let your body recoup than maybe you had, or you just stick with the same thing that you were? It's pretty similar. Um, and I, and I, th- I feel like the foundation I built uh, from last off season to this one helped me a, a lot because that was a big shift in a lot of things I was doing. And now it's more about just maintaining everything, uh, you know, a few improvements for sure uh, here and there and, and kind of just, you know, keep it simple. You feel like this team's ready to win the division? Oh, for sure. I mean, I'm excited. Like this clubhouse, I'm everyone's excited to be around each other. You know, there's already a buzz. I mean, just the fans here add into that. It's like fuel to the fire. But guys are excited to get back to Arizona and like, you know, compete again this year. And we all, you know, we follow the offseason really closely. We're looking at free agent signings and trades and things like that. How much attention do you pay to what your team is doing during these months? I wait for the headlines to come out. I'm not really into the rumors because I feel like that you get really into the weeds with those. But, uh, you know, it's 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 cool to see how, how we're already building our team. And, and it's, you know, we're excited for whoever else we can welcome for sure. Uh, I'll go ahead. I'll go ahead. We had the chance to uh, to meet. Shota Imanaga yesterday and uh, and see a little bit of what he's like and get a, a sense for his per- personality. Have you had the chance to to talk to him, introduce yourself yet? Yeah, yeah, we've had uh, quick introductions and yeah, it seems like a great, nice guy. I mean, he's coming into this 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 fan fest thing kind of like a into a you know whirlwind basically, like you know flying in here and getting everything done with the, his contract. So I mean, props to him for being able to be here and and like you know make make everyone kind of get to know his personality. I think it's really awesome. This is a different event, isn't it? I mean, oh, like, yeah. I know other teams have something sometimes, yeah. but this this is different. Yeah. What's it like from a player's perspective coming in and seeing even just opening night? Oh, yeah. Oh, opening ceremonies, you feel like you're ready to go and, and pitch in a game after that kind of <laughs> adrenaline rush going on the stage. Might be more, actually. But, uh, no, it's I haven't seen anything like it. Um, and I think it's special that people come out here through the cold weather, you know, find, find their way with their, you know, snow boots and, and pack the place, man. It was cool. I love a good story that comes out. Every, you know, every year you're looking for a fun story that comes out in baseball. I think Mike Talkman was a great story last season. Uh, but the one I read, uh, I think it was Marquis, about the four-leaf clover with your mom in the hat. Okay, ex- explain that to people that haven't read the article. Explain that your mom gives you a four-leaf clover? How often? She just sends them in the mail. Like, it comes in with my fan mail. I have to make sure, okay, oh, there's one for mom. It's probably like five four leaf clovers that she like wrapped in there and she just keeps I'm, she's like looks for them and that's like when people ask her how do you find all these four leaf clovers she's like oh i just look for them I so these are, she's, for she's actual, finding these on the ground and yeah she has yeah. this weird ability to like see the pattern she's been able to do this for like ever since she was young so it's kind of it blows people away that she can just go through a, a field and pick out like five like just like nothing she's like she's yeah. got jedi powers or something for yeah, four leaf she clovers. might yeah yeah she might <laughs> <laughs> she might so obviously I would assume you're a superstitious family. No, are, is she superstitious? And are you superstitious? I feel like that's got to be in our DNA at this point. Yeah. It's something, right? Like it's almost ingrained. But no, that's that's something I've done. I mean, she's always been like super superstitious. Like she will have to sit in a certain spot when I'm pitching. And if, you know, fall behind 3 0, she's going to already, you know, she's going to try to get ahead of it, <laughs> maybe change seats, maybe take a lap. She is just, you know, a wreck. But, you know, it helps her kind of calm down, I think, knowing that I, I got a four leaf clover up in there. Nice. So do you have other superstitions that you follow? Like, you know, do you have to put the socks on one at a time or? No, I'm, I wouldn't say superstition like that. I'm, I'm super routine. Like I, I, cause I want to take all the, that stuff out of it. And like, I, if I know my routine, it's, it's more boring, but it's like, it keeps my brain in a good spot. Yeah. Any other guys on the team who have their own superstitions or, or little things like that, that they do for each game? Oh man. I, I feel like if I was around the starters, I feel like that's a group that usually they have these little ticks and these like superstitions. Um, maybe it's like the buildup of each game that they have to pitch. Where you're in the bullpen, you're just kind of praying every every game. You know, hey, let's, let's hope we get out of this one. You know, <laughs> so it's a little different mentality. But um, I can't think honestly any off the top. But I'm sure you'll get some good answers from firsthand accounts. See, now I think bullpen guys generally are a different breed, like you said, than starting pitchers. What about the idea of your mom? You know how like Ohio State, they put the little buck guy on the helmet. You have a good game or what? 
if she's got this many four leaf clovers, maybe she should be spreading the wealth with the rest oh. of the bullpen. Okay. You know, you know like Al's lie. Good game. Here's your four Here's leaf your four clover leaf for clover, the next yeah. game. We, we can, might be able to work something out. She, I mean, that's been her thing. I'm talking little league. You know, she was handing all the kids out four leaf. Clover. Everyone See? wanted one. So, hey, we might be on to something here. I like that I idea. So. Spread the luck. I don't think I've ever found a four leaf clover I, ever in my life. I was going to say, some ever. people spend their whole lives looking for them and never yeah. find one. Crazy. but your mom just she's she's, she's a magnet for did it. she, she plant does. them in your yard or like maybe there's yeah maybe there's right? a little like this there's is something going on. young yeah now, now it's like starting to make sense here santa claus isn't real <laughs> kids yeah, don't yeah. watch this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> julian this has been a lot of fun and uh good luck this season good health this season and uh we'll see you in the playoffs oh yeah i'll see you guys around i appreciate you guys having me man a lot of fun thanks for coming we all silly like the mayor.